After finishing today's video, you will essentially be able to handle your own anxiety, depression, compulsion, and a range of other emotional issues on your own. Heal yourself, awaken yourself, until you rewrite your life as a true enhancement of self-awareness and wisdom. This video, which requires a fee to be played in other domains, is shockingly powerful today. Remember to like and save the video so you can find it when you want to watch it. Those who can watch until the end will benefit for a lifetime. If your understanding is poor, it's okay. Just watch it several times out of a love for learning. Let's get straight to the point. The biggest obstacle to gaining wisdom includes anxiety disorder, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, etc. The root of these problems actually lies in your brain or your thinking. It constantly tells you stories and forces you to listen, then compels you to think. Once you can't control yourself and let your brain become your master, you will definitely fall into anxiety, pain, and depression. Unable to extricate yourself, it's like a car whose brakes have failed and is accelerating uncontrollably. Unable to stop, if the brake system is not repaired, your car will sooner or later be scrapped, and the consequences will be unimaginable. Regarding how we are trapped in brain thinking, we will discuss this topic. The purpose is to lead everyone out of the limitations and control of the mind. The most important thing about living in the present is to step out of the brain's thinking. Step out and look at the me who is thinking with the brain. Once you can step out and become the observer of the thinking me, you will suddenly discover that it is not the real me, and it is not what Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. These so-called thoughts, at their core, are compulsive. The inability to stop thinking is your most terrible trouble. Constant thinking or uninterrupted mental activity of the brain makes it impossible for you to achieve inner peace, let alone live in the present. Your thinking is either replaying the past or predicting the future. You just want to stubbornly cling to the past and future trying to reach a definite conclusion. This is a typical operating mechanism of the brain. In this process, it creates a so-called thinking me, which constantly projects fear and anxiety. In fact, as soon as you stop thinking, your suffering will immediately disappear. Most cancer patients are scared to death. Why? They die of thinking, don't they? The Buddhist concept of no-self also urges us to break through this thinking self, because this thinking self is not the real me. Descartes' statement, I think, therefore I am, was his conclusion after doubting everything, even doubting doubt itself. He realized he couldn't doubt any further because this doubt was a real existence. So, he thought he had found the truth, but actually, he just expressed a fundamental mistake that causes all of us to suffer. He equated thinking with existence, and identified with thinking. This so-called existence is still within three dimensions. If he had gone one step further, he would have seen through it. As I said earlier, we are all compulsive thinkers, living in a fragmented state, strictly speaking. Before complete awakening and enlightenment, each of us is schizophrenic, anxious, and depressed. Everyone is, just that some people's density and intensity of thoughts have reached an uncontrollable level causing their physical system to collapse. It's like your computer's CPU overheating because you're running to many things. This is what you call severe anxiety, severe depression, or even serious mental illness. But in reality, if you can stop thinking, all your problems will naturally be solved. Much more effective than medication, self-observation, meditation, refinement, focus, etc are all about helping you apply the brakes, slowing down the rapidly spinning brain and the ceaseless mental activity. Let them slow down, occasionally stop and rest. A donkey pulling a millstone non-stop for three days and nights will die of exhaustion, right? Remember, your brain will seize every opportunity, like your experiences, mistakes, habits, memories, etc., to make you engage in compulsive thinking. Take mistakes. For example, the biggest problem for people is not making mistakes, but identifying with the mistakes themselves, thinking that the mistake is them. Then they start a series of continuous self-criticism. What we should do is choose to see and receive the mistake-making, habit-driven physical self, and realize in the moment that it's not me. How superior I am. It has nothing to do with me. Remember, we are the drivers not the car. Whether it's my habits leading my body to make mistakes or someone else insulting my body, 
we must always remind ourselves that I am still an independent, complete, and free entity of free will. How could I possibly be hurt by things in the three-dimensional world? Silly, right? This is what I often say when answering questions from friends. I tell them that no one in this world can hurt you except yourself. Remember, the one who makes mistakes or is violated is not me. They are all various smaller selves or material entities. I am just using mistakes to train my free will in the world. Leveling up my soul. It's just like playing a game. If you lose in a game, how much can it really hurt the player? I don't understand. Remember, the main thing must not be confused. Once you get the main thing wrong, those false selves you identify with, those egos, thinking they are yourself, are doomed. This is the source of your suffering and the root of all anxiety and depression. In essence, it's your self-loss. Don't look for external reasons. Everything in this three-dimensional world is a reflection, a projection. If there's a problem with the reflection, the source of the projection, it's the problem. Why did our ancestors always tell us, if you can't achieve something, seek the reason within yourself? Who is the real me? Actually, it should be the one who is constantly trying to break free from social habits and compulsive thinking. The one suffering and striving to maintain a present state. That immature, still growing little soul. That fragile and not yet firm free will. Remember, that is the real you. When you completely don't know who you are, you are severely anxious and depressed. So, looking back at Descartes' statement, I think, therefore I am. How should we interpret it? He corrected it. I think it should be I observe that I think, therefore I am. Think about it. When you start to really observe the thinker, a higher level of free will is activated. You'll realize that many beautiful things actually come from outside of thinking, like love, wisdom, inspiration, intuition, and inner peace. At this moment, you are truly beginning to awaken. So, I think Descartes ultimately did not free himself from his brain. He was still a compulsive thinker. Now, many people will ask, after saying so much, how bad must our brains be? Can we live without our brains? Some people say, isn't what I'm saying in this video thought out by my brain? Good question. First of all, if our brains and thinking are used correctly, they can be a very powerful tool. But if used improperly, their harm can be considerable. Look at so many people with depression. They are ruined by their own brains. To be precise, it's not that you're using your brain the wrong way, but that you're not using it at all. It's using you. For example, when you start a business, invest, play games, argue with people, etc., you think you are using your brain to make money, entertain yourself, or persuade others. But in fact, it's your brain's thinking driving you to do these things. It's what your brain wants to do, what your habits want to do. Maybe you don't even like doing these things. You think you are your thinking, you are your brain, but it should just be a tool. And fortunately, you've been controlled by this tool. Actually, the brain itself is not bad, but the problem is that we are unconsciously controlled by the brain. Once that happens, we will constantly focus on negative things like anxiety, pain, depression, past, and future thoughts. All right, then back to the question, when should we use our brains? It's simple. When we are not under the influence of habit, when we are truly enjoying the present moment, following inspiration, or under the premise of raised awareness, these are the times when you can freely use your brain. But remember, when you start to feel negative, anxious, fearful, compulsive, depressed, etc. You need to be immediately aware and stop thinking. Realize that your thinking is trying to control you through your thoughts. It's starting to tell you stories. At that moment, you need to immediately step into an observer's perspective and observe the various thoughts of your brain, especially those repetitive, negative voices from the past or future. Remember, when you listen to those voices, do not judge, because as soon as you do, you will be hooked. What you need to do is just see what happened that suddenly made it make such a sound. Using Mr. Yang Ming's words, it's movement caused by suitability. When you are listening and observing your thinking, you not only become aware of this thinking, but you also see that I am thinking. A new, higher dimensional I is born, and he is what I call the deeper self, free will. In some systems, it's called the higher self. Throughout this entire process of self-observation, it is also a form of meditation. 
but this is an internal and dynamic meditation. This type of meditation directly helps you refine your free will. This is what is called the state where everyone else is drunk and I alone am sober. But note, it's not over yet. Following this, a miraculous phenomenon occurs with this higher level of consciousness, which is free will, the appearance of a higher self, those thoughts that have been troubling you, the compulsive negative thinking. Suddenly, their energy begins to weaken and quickly dissipates. This is because you no longer identify the false self of that thinking as your own. You no longer acknowledge their legitimacy. This is called liberation. This is called striving for awakening. Congratulations. Your compulsive thinking is starting to be terminated. Your depression, anxiety are also starting to be healed. Now, let's strike while the iron is hot. What we just discussed was the notion of I think, therefore I am. That is, I am the observer of myself. This is your first technique, which can be called dynamic meditation. Actually, this process often doesn't take much of your time. The so-called second technique is static meditation. This can be done immediately after you quickly complete identification and self-observation during any negative emotional state, like anger. For example, when you start to have thoughts or feel troubled, you should sit quietly for a moment. In psychology, this is called cessation of thought. When Wang Yangming was troubled, he did the same. He just sat down on the ground and meditated. Meditation is actually forcing your brain to stop thinking, forcing you into a state of thought cessation, a state of mental blankness. When this blankness occurs, you will experience that inner peace. And by focusing on the present moment, why do great minds like Steve Jobs fervently practice meditation? Because in this state, you will break free from the limitations and control of thinking. You will become more alert, more awake. You put aside all cognition and knowledge. At this time, what you receive and experience is only intuition, inspiration, and wisdom. This is a method to connect with higher dimensional wisdom. In a certain sense, this state is a state of selflessness. It allows you to transcend the self you previously recognized, experience it more, and you will increasingly feel that higher dimensional self. At the same time, you will increasingly see that self in the three-dimensional world, under the control of thought, that fabricated, suffering self, your own physical body, ridiculous and comical. This is the inevitable path of awakening. Focus all your attention on the present moment. This moment, apart from observing the thinker, is the best and most effective way to divert us from the mental activity of the brain and create a mental blank. At this time, you are highly alert. Although you have no mental activity, your attention is highly concentrated. This is the essence of meditation, how to examine oneself from a higher dimension. We will continue to explore in the next issue. Thank you for subscribing.